Hello everyone. I hope you can hear me. If you can't, please buzz us and say you can't hear me. Okay, I'm assuming I'm audible. Hello once again. My name is Sandhya Shri. I'm a holistic lifestyle coach practicing for the past two decades. I'm a mother of two beautiful daughters, age 21 and 17. The main reason for curating a mental health program is to remind people that there is no stigma attached to depression. It's okay to feel depressed. It's okay to feel low. You need to embrace this feeling so that you can find solutions. Like how Henry Ford said, there are no dead ends. There is always a way out. What you learn in one failure, you utilize in your next success. Isn't that beautiful? So today we have with us Madhura Vail, my friend and Sharan facilitator and nutritionist. I'm sure most of you know her. But do you know she has battled depression and successfully come out of it? And she came out of it, came out of it through diet and some positive thinking. So today she's going to share with us some valuable tips on how she did it and we are going to hear her story welcome madhura thank you so much sandeesh ji thank you so much it's amazing to be here on this platform and talking on depression and everything thank you okay madhura uh, let's start by hearing a little bit about your childhood so when i talk about my childhood uh, i come from a dysfunctional family so my parents were two beautiful individuals and i uh, like individually they were really really good but together the dynamic was not really great my father suffered from mental health issues and uh, life was really difficult uh, during school days uh, things were kind of getting better when he actually passed away when i was in 10th grade i was only 15 years old when he passed away and that time i think looking at my mom's life and all her struggles and everything i thought it's best that i you know like move on and do something other than just being there around her because i thought she needed her space the biggest thing in the school life that i faced was you know every time a problem used to come up i was told that you have to face the problem fight it out and move on there was no uh, like you know we were not allowed to really sit back and cry over any issue that's why my way of dealing with any issue was just getting up and running away so escapism was something that i really did a lot in school okay so it's been a pattern for you to just leave when there is a problem yes kind of i have changed so many cities and i have just you know not settle down at all in my early days settlement came okay. late in life okay the fact that you didn't grieve about your dad's death or the fact that you didn't want to be around your mom maybe felt you would be a burden whereas you could have been an emotional support to her the fact that you didn't want to stay back in solapur just to tell the viewers that you were born in mumbai you moved to solapur with your mom your mom's work took you there and then quickly after your father's death you moved away to pune so this reaction that you had of not mourning not expressing when you look back now do you feel that this war this these were signs of depression so if you ask me today like obviously not i never really realized that it was depression but uh, like now i realize it was depression sorry but back then i really didn't uh, you know understand for me i really lacked the sense of belonging to a family because i was already always split up between the two and i was raised by my mother and my grandma so uh, yeah there was no sense of belonging and moving to a new city i just wanted to be with myself i never really had that you know like close set of friends or like uh, kind of bonding or nothing that was not there were you vocal about your feelings did you talk to anybody during this period since you were brought up by your grandmom and your mom did you speak to them about how you felt um see again as i said you know i was always raised to be like okay anything happening in your life everybody is going through issues and everybody has problems so you just have to 
deal with it also my mother was dealing with a lot of her own issues uh, so i never was that vocal to her i did discuss but not much in depth it really never happened that way so once you moved from solapur to pune for your high school what happened there so because of so much of bottling up of emotions like this is what i feel today like so much of bottling up of emotions and not being able to communicate with anybody like and always holding on to a lot of emotions i had this uh, very serious emergency operation that happened in pune like my appendix had burst and they had to remove it so that was i think the first time i really felt that you know somewhere my body is also reacting uh, but yeah like that was the first symptom basically so as louis hay says whatever physical ailments that surface on us it's actually the emotional state that is speaking through a physical body pain so i'm sure right now when you are sitting here and talking to me you did realize that your body was crying for help and saying i need to communicate yeah i think the biggest uh, the biggest thing with me has been communication because uh, the way of showing it was always be a go getter you know achieve a lot even with so many things happening i had stood first in my college for the 12th grade so externally i think i was still much much better but internally mm-hmm. the turmoil was too much to handle and uh, and how was your food habits because generally appendix is uh, because of bad eating habits uh, were you eating wrong because you were away from home that was the most um you know that's the most surprising part of the whole thing because i come from a medical family my mom is a doctor so you know it was always ingrained in us that you have to be healthy you have to eat well you have to exercise you know all that was always there so i don't think appendix was because of bad food habits but because of appendix i landed up in bad food habits like i started seeking comfort in a lot of junk food and fried food you know because food always is very very comforting At some point i was really addicted to maggi always eating maggi all the time so yeah it was and in a span of about 2 months i had put on 8 to 10 kg of weight so from being a very over healthy scrawny girl i had become like this obese fat person and did you go through body shaming too yeah kind of because you know you're so healthy and overnight you've become like uh, you put on so much weight so yeah there was a lot of backlash from the relatives and stuff but you know always like face it and move on face it and move on so your way of facing it is just accept it and just move on maybe go to another city and did you move to another city i did so from pune i landed up in mumbai uh, and again landed up in a hostel and as a hostel environment is the junk food addiction flowed on into other addictions so you know one like it started with one cigarette which went on to two then became four and then when did it get into alcohol so it just started it was like a starting point and throughout this these addictions that you were piling up uh, your family was unaware about what you were doing were you completely hiding it from them or you didn't care much it was not hiding or it was not caring much but it was like you know i was do- like externally i was doing well i was scoring well in college i was really doing well in whatever i had taken up academics extra curricular i was really doing well so i don't think anybody really sensed that thing in me and it just kept on happening but yeah my rational side like because i was externally doing well somewhere i knew i didn't have to get into drugs and you know that side of me was very strong at that point do you think the fact that you had your rational mind working per se according to you so you felt that maybe i am fine i am just doing fine these addictions are normal to have because i am in i'm a young adult did you think that way i always crave for the sense of belonging i always had it in me that you know somebody should accept me and somewhere i need to belong so that group of people became that thing for me like you know i started feeling that oh i'm so the, uh, the addiction actually gave you a set of people whom you could hang out with in the new city exactly so it just became like that and then the whole combination of food and booze and uh, cigarettes it just became a lethal combination for bad health okay so if i have to ask you when was it that you really realized maybe i need help or maybe i'm depressed because 
while i was talking to you you told me throughout there was something very slightly a feeling that was coming in that i am not doing fine and you were brushing it past you were scoring you were doing well with society so you just thought it's okay but when was it that you realized no there is something wrong so if i have to really pinpoint one day like if it has to be that moment then it is 7th june 2006 uh it was actually the day when you know after a very long drawn battle you know something very personal that i was dealing with i had actually come out victorious like i had won wow. out, you know it was a very nice feeling but instead of enjoying and celebrating and having you know like friends over and i was feeling very empty like you know suddenly as if some burden was lifted up from me and i was very empty like suddenly i felt what is there to live for that kind of feeling started coming in and somewhere i started addressing myself as a third person you know like i started feeling i'm fed up of madhura like now i don't want to do this anymore i don't want to question you know i want some new set of problems now i just want, don't want to do that so at any point of having all these feelings did you take any help um i tried to take help when i was in college i did i went to a counselor we had like every colleges have counselors nowadays so did go to a counselor but you know somewhere i really couldn't connect and i think that's where i wish i would have you know a lot of it would have saved me a lot of grief if i could if i could have just asked for help but being that person like you know like can't accept defeat kind of a personality i really couldn't connect with somebody so what happened after you realized maybe something is wrong uh you know those Seven days after the day, I realized this was very difficult because it was like I had become like an automated robot. It was just you know like going through life with no feelings and no emotions, with an empty mind, and you know as if what more can I do and what is happening to me? And finally, on the seventh day, I suffered my uh, paralytic stroke. So on 14th June, I completely broke down and the entire left side just crashed. So, okay. Yeah. i'm sure most of us most of the viewers who are watching realize that's the most dramatic way of body trying to communicate this far no further it couldn't take any further so let me view uh, fill in the viewers with some more information when madhura takes a moment to of uh, silence uh madhura suffered uh, a paralytic attack and uh, the same pattern of wanting to run away going away to another city and wanting to be and be in control still continued in her she had acquired a, an admission in a leading university in the us and she decided that i do want to be a dependent on adults in india i want to go away and took a strong decision to go to the us the us had lots of plus and minus for her it brought in a lot of support she became lot more confident she educated herself the best thing that happened to her was she met her husband there but little did she know that the depression was just suppressed and it was it had not vanished by now she was physically in a lot better space and she managed to have a baby but what happened to her after she had a baby was something she could not fathom nor could people around her she suffered postpartum depression so can you please talk about it madhura i'm sure a lot of viewers have gone through this so um, you know actually this incident uh, really touches me somewhere because i remember the day my daughter was born and she was given to me and i hardly could uh, you know like enjoy because i think mothers should be ecstatic first born having a baby and yet it was very difficult to enjoy my daughter i really couldn't even like smile with her laugh with her all i like i remember the next 3 4 months i used to just sit with her and cry i was sobbing all the time and that's when my mom was like no you need to do something about this this is this is getting uh, like it still really like hates me up that i have not enjoyed her the way i was supposed i have not enjoyed her the way i was supposed to have you know and then we decided that like actually i decided that this you know this is not how i want for to remember her mother to be and then i decided no i have to do something about it uh so did you take help did you again did you seek anybody for help 
did you take medication or did you go to a counselor what did you do you know that sandeshi that's been my biggest uh, regret you know like wish i could have like it would have really really saved me a lot of uh, problems you know i could have gotten the help earlier but i have not been able to do that and that's why i always tell people that it's it's good to ask for help and good to take a professional advice on this uh but all i managed to do was you know i just decided to take small steps within me i still had that hope that yes i can break out of this and i started taking smaller steps so what was your first step that you took um so basically i was very fond of exercising like i have been a gym rat for like the longest period of time i used to love gymming a lot earlier so i thought maybe i should just get moving i should just you know start like just pick myself up and do something so i should i used to take rave up for walks and us is full of nature trails and you know amazing beauty around so that's where i really started bonding with my daughter she was about 6 months i used to put her in a sling and we used to go walking and some of my best memories are on that walk that for the first time i really felt uh, you know yeah yes you know something good has happened and i need to start so exercise gave me a lot of hope a lot of Thing. Okay, so uh, exercise can't be the only thing. What else did you do? So now, being a nutritionist, I I was like I am a nutritionist. So somewhere, you know, I started feeling, you know, I need to take care of my body as well. And somehow, because uh, I was not able to feed her well that time, and the doctors had also suggested that I need to lose weight. That was a lot of uh, importance given to that. So I thought, okay, let me. So I started cutting down on animal products. I had not completely gone onto a plant-based lifestyle, but I cut down animal products and I started oil-free cooking. So that was work. Like that really helped because I started shedding a little weight. And any time you lose weight, you know your mood elevates. So that was something that really helped. So first was exercise, and second was just dropping down the animal products. Okay. So any other pointers you can give us? so uh i think the best thing that happened was because of the the initial beginning of dropping the uh, animal products and somewhere my husband also becoming sicker and you know his cholesterol levels getting higher he got the the, the plant based lifestyle home and then we overnight like overnight we turned a uh, plant based and i think that's been the best thing that has happened to me unknowingly like without me doing anything or anything it just fell in my lap and i just started doing it and the calmness and clarity started coming because animal products are so much loaded with stress and hormones and all that thing that it just calmed me down you know somewhere it just started making me okay you don't need to get hyper about everything some things can be let go you know i started getting into that mode You have you uh, you had less stress to handle, which was not your own. Exactly. Like suddenly, you know, it felt like oh, I'm free. You know, I'm just free of this additional, you know, that cloud hanging over my head, which just went away beautifully. Okay. So after this, you for the first time in your life, you moved back with happiness and not running away. So you moved back to India. Yes. After that, I moved back voluntarily. You know, without any. there was no issue no escape nothing it was just that yes we wanted to come back to family and set up uh, set up a house in india and the best again the second best thing that happened to me was i came to know about this organization called sharan you know and this was the right place and the right sense of belonging because i really found the my purpose of life and now it's like you know i put all my energies into it so there is no time to be depressed suddenly it's, it's all about you know doing something creative creating the awareness it's become a way of life suddenly oh if being with sharan what was that one thing that you picked up which really helped you to keep your check on your depression uh so when i actually became plant based in us and it was all through self education like i was watching documentaries and reading books and everything but when i came to india and i joined sharan i learned a lot from dr nandita like you know her seminars and everything the information she gave out was very very liberating the biggest thing i learned was the vitamin d and b12 levels because we just feel they are necessary for metabolism and everything else but they are necessary for your 
mental health also for your nervous system also for you know your mood and everything it's very very important so have did you check your b12 and d3 levels before when you were actually feeling low when you were in the us or when you were back in mumbai in when you were an uh, young adult never i i don't think anybody till then had prescribed even you know looking at those two levels but just when i attended these versus pills with dr nandita and she stressed on it i remember the first thing i came back home and i went and did my b12 and it was so low that you know once i started supplementing that was another marked difference that i saw right okay okay so if we have if you have to give top 5 tips to our viewers what that what would that be so because i love exercising and i love being in nature my first tip is just start, get up and start moving you know sometimes we get so sucked in by the depression i think just changing your a body posture or just getting up and moving can bring out a big difference that's my first tip my second tip is definitely going on a whole food plant based diet because we don't need any additional stress we already have too much happening around us even with the lockdown and pandemic now i think just free yourself from these all add on stuff so that's my second point though third would be definitely check vitamin d and b12 Uh, if you're not aware, the Sharan website has a try vegan section. Please just go and see how you can supplement yourself, or you can take consultations with us. So just get those two things tested, and it will take you a long way. Uh, fourth is because negativity is so dark, right? You get pulled in towards it. So just start practicing a little bit of positive thinking. Just change your language, maybe start using positive words. Try to see the positivity around. So maybe that would be or like i used to listen to i still listen to motivational speakers like louis hay and bk uh, shivani and tony robbins just find who clicks with you and just whenever you feel you're slipping just open youtube and listen to a few of these inspirational uh, speakers and at least you get you know that thing breaks down like you don't go more deeper you at least stay where you are and last but not the least is create a routine for yourself you know like depression never comes knocking it's somewhere with you or something so just create a routine like you know 2 minutes of meditation it needn't be like i have to meditate every morning at 6 o'clock or exercise for 1 hour simplify 2 minutes of meditation 3 minutes of affirmation 5 minutes of exercise create a 10 minute schedule for you which you can do any time of the day morning afternoon evening you're not limiting yourself to something which you cannot do So when you achieve that, you know the sense of achievement and that success is too high. So do these five things, and I think they have really, really helped. Okay, thank you, Madhura. So I want to speak to the viewers a bit before we take questions from them. The coach in me kicks in. So I would like to reiterate and revisit the trail of conversation that we had with Madhura. So let me just share a screen with you. okay if you actually notice uh, madhura came from a dysfunctional family i'm sure there are lots of viewers who have issues with parents or parents who are being together still have lots of issues between them children absorb what is happening in the family be watchful of how your relationships are because it's very important that you know what is the effect that is having on the child like they say when you conceive a child what you feel the child is going to absorb and the first first 5 6 years of the child is an absorbent mind the child absorbs all that is happening around uh, in their environment so it is very important that we always always realize what is the effect we are having on the environment around us so look for that lack of self worth throughout the journey madhura found it very difficult to accept herself she didn't like her scrawny self nor did she like her healthy chubby self she always always look for some kind of appreciation to know how she looked and that led her to want to move from one place to another 
this is something she had not told us uh, madhura suffered of bed wetting from a very early age till the age of 15 though she had strong women in the house who were actually helping her growing up she still was having the problem of bed wetting when children do bed wetting many of us are harsh with the child give it a thought maybe there is something that is disturbing the child the child needs to address something which he is he or she is not able to express we need to give a child an opportunity to talk we need to give an adult an opportunity to talk we all need to express today i sandhya shri express that i am nervous so there is nothing wrong in feeling what i am feeling because i am talking about something which is extremely close to my heart without being able to see even one of my audiences it is nerve wracking but it's not depressing but there is a feeling that i am going through when we open ourselves out and speak we will feel lot more better until you speak you cannot get help nobody can read what is there in your mind but when it comes to a child the child may not know how to express so we as an adult can be lot more intuitive and ask the right questions if you are not able to ask the right questions take them to a counselor and get them that help this will go a long way we need more able citizens around us every child is important to us every life is important to us it starts very early let's be all let's all be invested with all the children all the adults and all the human beings around us once in a while let's ask somebody around us how are you doing without an agenda maybe they will talk to you moving from one city to another in a way if you see she was extremely lucky that she could leave a city that she didn't like she was born in mumbai raised in solapur went to high school in pune came to mumbai went away to us when she just didn't want to be here everybody does not have the choice how many of us can just leave we can't we need to stay so if we have to stay we need to address our problems we need to look at the problem and say hello i am not feeling good in this relationship i am feeling toxic from within i am not fine maybe i need to take a gap year maybe i need to quit this job maybe i'm tired of parenting we need to say it we need to pronounce it and don't feel scared just say it nobody is judging you if you find your environment is judging you it's their shortcoming not yours the right help will flow have that confidence in the universe the bursting of the appendix was a clear indication that her body was screaming for help she did not take it the reason why we are breaking it down and telling you is there may be someone out there who could be experiencing something similar or someone around you i identify this is a indication that the person is not fine so let's pick up that phone let's write that email or let's do a whatsapp call and ask hey how are you doing how how is how is your health ask these questions maybe you can give them that health finding comfort in food and excess weight excess weight gain this is a no brainer when you find kids completely addicted to refined food packaged food junk food it's an indication that the child is losing touch with their own self their body will not like refined food or packaged food junk food addiction is a clear is clear indication that the child is trying to cover up or uh, uh, overcome a stress the stress that they are going through so tell the child that okay this is my way of de stressing are they the excess weight gain she had 
was because she was not willing to talk or express herself so she if she had spoken maybe she could have skipped the appendix operation or skipped a lot more things that could have come after that she moved on to addictions like cigarettes and alcohol thank god i didn't get into drugs because i had control of my mind you are into drugs you are into cigarettes or you are into alcohol you are in control or not in control the fact is we are not required to have these things that is not a staple meal if you are having one or 10 it is a beginning of an addiction identify it the identification is the most important once you identify it you will definitely find help and once you find help let me tell you again and again like how she said i found somebody and i didn't like them it's okay it's not it's it's not like the first go you find the best restaurant the best home to live in you do hunt for something right you do go shopping right when you to like get the right outfit so do shop for a good counselor a teacher or a psychiatrist or just a friend talk to 10 people don't worry of being judged if they say the person is in depression again educate them it is not a stigma i have the courage to speak i'm not a coward when you wear it on yourself that you are a courageous soul you will be amazed the whole world will open up for you need to belong and be accepted by a group the present teenage generation is really really suffering to belong to a peer group just to belong how much they kill themselves when children tell me that they can't spend time with themselves or they feel bored with themselves it's so funny if you cannot enjoy your own company how will anybody enjoy your company this is the place we live most of the time let's make it a good one this mind of us has to be healthy beautiful and nurturing if we are not accepting if we don't feel we belong within ourselves we can never belong anywhere else we don't need a group we need ourselves so be in touch with yourself and being in touch with yourself starts with doing a little bit of self talk how many of you have looked into the mirror and said i think i'm not doing fine i need help how many of you have actually looked into the mirror and looked into your eyes i'm sure many of you say we have not even got there because we are so down with depression somewhere something we need to start if you feel you are depressed go get yourself help talk to a counselor in school talk to a friend's mom talk to your own parents talk to an aunt but choose somebody don't give up speak unwilling to take help and being a control freak madhura said it in a way that you know i just wanted to do it myself what is the cost of being a control freak she got herself paralyzed today she is a flag bearer telling people take help when very initial stages don't push your body to an appendix burst or a paralysis just go ahead and speak she can't she can't stop reiterating this to you you won't believe it every time she speaks to youngsters older women parents she keeps saying this please speak up don't push your body because she's not proud of being a control freak she's lot more open to a lot of suggestions today suppressing emotional bankruptcy by excelling professionally if you see she had this entire journey where this is a very relate when you think that a child is doing well in education you just feel that maybe they're doing fine if your son is doing well at work you feel okay he's going to a job and he's getting his promotions if your daughter is uh is running her own business and she's able to manage her finances you feel she's doing fine a person's personality is not just judged by one aspect of their life you need to look at them from all angles you need to look at them from every dimension 
professional growth is one part of it education is one part of it we all are forgetting how are we doing emotionally have we done any test on it have we ever asked ourselves is there a health check up that can say how our emotional health is doing there is none available and that is the reason we are landing up with so many depression cases and ultimately ending with suicide let's not allow this to happen let's all start investing on our emotional health let's just get up and say i am going to assess myself ask a open question to a group and say what do you think are you able to take criticism depression starts from very very early stage when people are not able to take criticism feedback or somebody says you need help is looked upon as you are insulting me you are not being insulted you are give, being given constructive feedback so if you think the person who is giving is not worthy enough ask somebody you think is worthy enough she gave us remedies she told us exercise regularly now don't get into the pressure that i need to gym i need to cycle i need to run marathons you know when you say exercise regularly it can be just walking around your home or just doing sit ups at home or just doing some lunges at home or doing a plank at home or just standing in your kitchen in a tree pose it can be anything but just telling your body you will do things that i am instructing you and we are both having a conversation just move do a jumping jack don't look for people take pressure i need to do this there is no time for it just do it move your body when you move you will find a difference because you start a new communication with your body and body speaks very well about emotions switch to whole plant based lifestyle maybe too much for some people and you must be thinking the whole world there's so many of us eating non veg so what are you talking about this is a remedy she is giving because it worked for her and i am suggesting this because it worked for me and all i'm saying is it's simple the animal goes through stress when it's butcher and that is there in the flesh and when you consume it you are boring extra stress into your body why would you do that don't you have enough in your own life so let's reduce the stress is what i am saying be open to this try going vegan try plant based or at least try to you lessen the animal products just the way madhura did madhura just lessen the animal products and she started feeling better so if you want to try it we have a whole lot of opportunity to do it at sharan check your b12 and d3 levels regularly we have a, a website where we are telling you how to do it you have no idea it can be as simple as your levels have dropped and that is the reason why you are feeling so low just take that medication and there you go feeling lighter why depriving yourself of some such simple remedies just try this and practice affirmation listen to motivational speakers fine but when you are actually depressed and you say i can't do all this i can't pick up a book i can't go on the youtube all i'm saying is first thing is identify the remedies can be your own you will find your own remedies this is the remedies madhura has given you you can find your own remedies what happens is when you hear somebody who's gone through a lot in their life like louis hay you feel convinced and today hearing madhura's story she has been paralyzed and today she's walking jumping and dancing and has two healthy babies isn't it a miracle it's happened because she wanted to get out of that face we need to decide no more i'm going to stay here no longer i need to snap i need to get up don't just keep milking that you know if you have find five minutes of sadness don't keep thinking about those five minutes of sadness for 24 hours you're wasting your time it was a moment snap out of it help will come set a routine she said so what happens 
everybody wants to follow a routine what jacqueline fernandez is doing or rithik roshan is doing or someone or someone else is it doable in your life in your lifestyle 3 hours in the gym or 2 hours of yoga or 1 hour of marathon running no to understand your square space stay inside that square and make a doable routine for yourself you fail you have another day next day wake up and say wow i have another day to try and today maybe i will be successful and just say affirm i am going to be successful i am successful and then life will change so these top five remedies is madras and i need to tell you that please please do try these for you to see a difference in your life so we are open to questions so i let me stop my sharing and we will be able to take questions so i'm just trying to uh, get the questions madhura if you want to speak to the viewer something just when i'm just connecting the questions actually there's one question that has come up sandhya shri okay. when we do express our emotions like nitya is asking when we don't express our emotions we put okay. on we put on weight yes yeah so uh, basically when we bottle up our emotions somewhere we try to find comfort and because food is the best way because food doesn't back answer doesn't give any reasoning you know doesn't put you down doesn't so most of the time food is something that you turn on that you move towards and then most of the food that is comforting is usually fried food sweet food you know which it's very very like you know you get these happy bursts of because sugar makes you high and everything so yes like emotions when you bottle it up it usually it can even if you don't turn to food it can uh, cause weight gain it's a major thing that happens so it's always good to voice out what is happening do you have anything to add sandeep so some of them want to know uh, do you go through these bouts of depression now do you have any kind of feeling that you go through right now so uh, earlier when i used to be depressed is to be a, like you know deep sinking feeling and all that today it's not depression but yeah there are low phases definitely you know sometimes i do feel very very low but if i stick to my routine the five things that i told you all if i stick to that the lows never get very very deep it's just like a blip and i am out of it so i'm not in depression anymore but yeah i know how to handle if i'm going low and i don't allow myself to be all really, really sink down That, that, that did, did you after battling all this did you uh, did you get to meet a counselor who understood you um uh, i did take professional help after a very long time like really i did and i did a good seven sessions or eight sessions with her and yes it helped because there were a lot of unresolved childhood issues and sometimes we are carrying a burden for way too long you know it's, mm. and it's the need is to let go we have to declutter like unclutter the sadness to make space for the happy uh, memories or the happy moments around you so yeah it did but it came very very late in life and i sometimes feel i wish i wish i would have done it when i was a teenager or you know just graduating college because it did like you know most of the life is born just running away so yeah please take help a counselor does help okay so can you give us uh, uh, some tips on how you identify now because uh, now that you are in a good state, how do we identify especially for new mothers teenagers and uh, older women and people who are at home right now because of the lockdown we are all going through different kind of stresses so can you just give us some pointers on how you can say okay maybe i'm going to just break down or maybe i'm just nearing to that kind of a phase where i'm going low you know uh, sometimes uh, the best way to identify something is like you know whatever situation is happening around us we are feeling exactly the opposite of that like that is really one big sign like sometimes a very happy movie is going on and you are like completely sobbing your eyes out for and then you can't even pinpoint why that is happening so yes like you know try to identify whether you are in sync with what is happening 
around you which is kind of a major tell tale you know okay you can and secondly is you know if you are sad like sometimes like all of us have moments right it's not that you know we can only stay on cloud nine and always be brimming with joy so we just have to understand your sadness is not going to depths where you can't get out of like you know if you're getting into depths where it's very difficult to feel the sunshine and feel the happiness then yes somewhere it is a sign that something is wrong so if your depression okay. if your sadness is very very low then do seek help it means okay uh would you term it as an anxiety panic attack now like people having lack of sleep because we are not able to see the messages too well so uh people who get panic attack and uh, an anxiety attack so these things are also a pointer that people may be dipping into depression or they are going close to that yes no like possibly right like because if you are not doing something that you like i feel like if you have you know something is worth living for and you don't have that like the biggest thing i got after joining an organization like sharan was the purpose of life like if you feel your life doesn't have a purpose hmm. then you are missing out on something like you know we are just automated robots going through every single day okay so, uh i'm going to read a question uh when we go to professionals they prescribe medicines medicines helps to reduce the problem it does not come back how do we uh, but how do we handle this yeah so now see you already you already have understood that medicines don't help us right so what can we replace see everybody needs something to hang on to so i feel your diet your lifestyle your exercise you know you need to find that one niche for yourself something which you can hang on to and you can use it as a medicine like i if i feel this i'm going to do this right like if you have a panic attack i'm going to have this medicine like if i have a panic attack so find that one thing that is going to help you so personally as a coach i have seen many times that when people have panic attack or anxiety attack it is definitely an indication of lot of suppressed emotions medicines help in very severe cases but when it is coming due to a situation or it is like a trigger because something has happened i always tell people empower yourself speak to yourself find your patterns like how madhura had this pattern that her mother had told everybody has problem just get up wear yourself and keep moving we are taking this pattern very seriously because our parents had told us but have they excelled doing it did they show us a methodology that it has worked for them or maybe it may not work for us because we are in a different time and space i always tell people ask yourself what are you comfortable don't wear what others want to see you in wear what you are comfortable in you need to understand this medication is a handicap for me it makes me dependent the reason why we keep reiterating about the diet is because it empowers you and says what you eat is what you feel it's so obvious so when you eat right a lot of your feelings you know from where you're born leave alone animal products when you eat lot of junk you're very irritable you know why because your digestion is not doing fine and you're gaseous and in the process you're in an irritable mood but if you have a bowl of fruits you are looking so beautiful and fresh and naturally you are also eluding that energy when pay mothers or fathers come out very irritable i always tell them maybe just do some fruits and you will be less irritable with your kids don't you agree madhura yeah i definitely agree that whatever you put in your mouth really has an effect on your you know thinking process because a lot of stress and a lot of junk can really really not help okay so actually uh, sandhya there's a question about like, how do you deal with anxiety okay so i think you should answer that the when you are having anxiety the first thing you need to do is sit down and calm yourself down like you are, you are having a rapid heart rate 
and you are feeling that you are, your heart rate is going in an extreme unbelievable manner that you feel maybe there may there may be a heart attack or your something is happening to you i always tell people put your feet on the ground have a glass of water and just sit there and finish that glass of water without gulping down spend some time and watch your breath just breathe the first step is when you become in touch with your breath when you are aware with your breath you will automatically slow down your breathing will become subtler in the process your heart beat will come down your anxiousness will tone down a bit then you will be able to talk you don't need a medication for an anxiety attack what you need to do is some good sleep and then just understand that you are completely lost touch with your breath breathe my friends pranayam does wonders any other questions okay so surbhi is asking if anyone doesn't want to do anything how to help them so yeah there can be people like this is my input here like there can be people who really want to be left alone you know and they don't want any help or anything but here also if you just lend support like you just be with the person you don't have to do anything just be with the person and just be like a companion you don't have to tell them do this do that you know because in those moods i don't think anybody is willing to listen and it's not always that a person is 100% down and dumb or in a very deep mood so whenever they are up for you know some conversation or some change in scenario then maybe you can really kind of you know address it or something but if the person is not willing to listen there's no point in really pushing the person what do you say sandhya i think what the viewer was trying to tell us was uh, basically you identify it before the person identifies it for example i sandhya shri identify madhura needs help and i'm telling madhura take help and madhura says i'm totally fine i don't need help you need you got nuts so this is a very common problem when it comes to husband and wife uh, children they have these reactions or even mothers when you tell a mom you need some help you will be so surprised a mother will say i don't need help they will definitely disagree and they will not accept it one of the best ways to tell somebody that they need help is to show them the mirror i have many a times recorded people's behavior and shown them and said can you recognize this person this person is you or show them a situation where somebody who has not taken help where they went or also explain to them this is something you are not able to recognize this has to be done with tender loving care you should not talk from a place of judgment most of the time the person refuses uh refuses help because they feel they are judged believe me friends the minute you talk from your heart and when you show you care the person can feel it and they will be definitely open to it don't give up you care don't give up keep knocking at that door the door will open okay so uh, nitya is asking i too come from a dysfunctional family and have a lot of unresolved childhood issues including physical and emotional abuse it's not completely debilitating i do uh, well with yoga physical activity engage in hobbies changing to plant based uh, too but i am not yet at my full happiness potential is there anything more i can do i want to be completely free of all past bad experiences is it possible it is definitely possible i am sure madhura agrees with me uh, yes. you can be 100% out of it because if i would just say you know instead of saying i want everything to be removed i would say allow what comes on the top for example right now an abuse that happened in the age of 11 is coming to your mind address that only don't say i need to also deal with the one that happened with my boyfriend at the age of 18 we are analytically thinking that we need to tick this off and remove it it doesn't happen that way healing happens when the mind body and soul is ready i still remember a 80 year old woman who came to me 
and wanted to talk about an abuse that happened to her when she was just eight years old. She resolved it at 80. You have to be ready. So give yourself that time. And one of the ways in which you can ready yourself is to do those five things. And it does help. You'll get her on. Nitya, I'm sure if you're already doing a lot of things right, this is also going to happen. Be open to receive. Yeah, and just to add to what Sandashri is saying, there is always, always a silver lining to every cloud. So you just have to keep on, you know, take baby steps. Just keep on moving. Don't, because I'm not getting results overnight, just don't stop the process. Keep on going on, keep on doing it. And trust me, after a while, it will really feel that, you know, this thing has lifted from you. Affirmations, positive thinking really, really help. If you need uh, any help regarding that, we have amazing sessions happening with Sharon. We have one on 22nd July. Please do enroll for that. You will come to know how you can affirm because affirmation is a tool. It's a skill. If you learn it really well, you can use it on your day-to-day -day life. So do attend that session. We also have a recorded session on YouTube about it uh, under Sharon India. So please hear that session if you're... You know, it will just give you insight how you can keep on doing positive thinking and staying, you know, in control of whatever negative thoughts are coming. You know, Diren is asking, in the current situation, lots of people are losing jobs, which leads to depression, fear, sleepless nights, thinking what will happen next. How do you advise to handle the situation? My simple advice to people who are going through this, including many of us around us, or maybe even we can have those thoughts. First thing first, don't be in the future. Be in the present. It's good to plan, but don't over plan. How much money is enough? It's a question you can ask yourself. Look at the problem and say, I'm equipped to handle it. Believe whatever comes to you, you will be able to handle it. I'm sure the fears are manifested because you have made a mental calculation. You are somewhere manifesting the problem. You are telling yourself, let me prepare it. And maybe that's why it's going to happen. Let's be open. Maybe this lockdown will bring in a lot of good health, a lot of bonding, a lot of understanding between family. Maybe you're able to look at closely about how you want to live your life. Maybe you, you may even think, rethink about your profession. Spend this time to build yourself. Rethink. Don't overthink. Okay, so Dhiren is asking, can you advise some good link for meditation? How does affirmation work? So as I uh, earlier said with uh, the earlier question, we have a lot of amazing sessions happening on in Sharan and uh, we have the affirmation session. So please do attend. Please learn how you can write uh, amazing affirmations. And affirmations is just a tool. It's a tool which you can use for, you know, getting whatever you desire, whatever you want with positive thinking and just by, you know, changing, you know, getting the negativity out and adding vibration and positivity to your life. That's all that is there in affirmation. So if you can just learn how to do it, because most of the times we are using a lot of negative words and negativity is not recognized by the universe. So let's just drop the negativity and use more of high vibration and positive words and try to get that in our everyday life. So that's what affirmation helps with. Uh, Sandhya, the next question is by Neeru and she is saying, along with anxiety, there's fear of the unknown. What's the way out? Uh, come again. Uh, along with anxiety, there's fear of the unknown. What's the way out? So can I just say something? Yeah, please, please. So here usually what the, like, the coping mechanism or the tool that I use is I usually ask myself, is that fear 100% going to happen? Like sometimes we have the fear of being alone, the fear of losing our health, the fear of losing a loved one. So we just have to ask ourselves, are you 100% like really sure that thing is going to happen? Sometimes fears are very, very, uh, you know, irrational or, you know, they're very something that is stuck in us for a very long period of time. Uh, we sometimes, you know, one small thing happens and we jump to the end of the story. So we need to first break it down. Like, you know, is it definitely happening? Are you sure it's happening? Most of the time it's an irrational something that is not going to happen. So just ask yourself, is this something that is really going to happen to me or really going to affect me? And then maybe, 
you know you will come to know that it's really not that worth giving it that much importance and then try a little bit of positive thinking and affirmations and see if it helps over to you sir so basically you know when people say they have unknown fears i always tell them to flip to make the switch they have to make the decision for some person just changing the diet can help for some people you may need all the five tips that she did for some people just listening to shivani can make a lot of difference so you need to understand what kind of a personality you are i know so many people who listen to sadguru and feel a lot better after listening to him because they feel more sorted it is that switch what goes on for you what is that moment of conversion and write down if you okay this is what you have an unknown fear ask yourself how much can this fear come to what is the percentage of it coming to how can i fix it can i do something with myself meditation yoga the right food and having a routine somebody had asked me about roxan is asking about sleep lack of sleep is overthinking why are we overthinking because we are too much in the future we are always planning sometimes it it's good to surrender and say i surrender my day to my children today or i just surrender the day to the universe today i'm just going to surrender the day to the universe to the animals today and you would be so amazed the day will go by without much problem we are somewhere wanting to control it when people tell me i didn't get 6 hours 7 hours of sleep so i'm sleep deprived sometimes we are all yogis maybe we don't need that much sleep maybe our body needs only 3 hours of sleep and if you're sleeping every night sound 3 hours give an auto message to your body maybe that's all sleep you needed and you took it if you're feeling tired i'm willing to lie down why don't you also rest have a conversation with yourself split yourself and say the mind and the body can speak to you speak to each other it works so just tell yourself don't use words like deprived not enough maybe it's going to be wrong affirm positive things i have got enough sleep maybe that's all i require and you would be amazed things will start falling and sleep for people who don't sleep well routine is most important sleep at the same time wake up at the same time your mind will take the auto suggestion and the circadian rhythm will set in So Sandhya, time is almost up. And okay. Close the session. So. Okay. So before we close, uh, we would be meeting again next Friday with another uh, person, another person who would be narrating their story. That's Asha, all the way from Netherlands, who will be narrating her story, and I will be there along with her. And I'm